At first glance, this problem looks yucky, but we can take it step by step and make it a lot easier. The first thing that I'm going to do is use the distributive property to deal with these numbers outside of the parentheses. The distributive property is always a great place to start if you have it there. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this 8 and multiply it in to both terms. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the 6. I'm going to multiply it in to both pieces. Now, when we're dealing with fractions, remember that when we multiply, we only multiply it to the numerator. So the 8 and the 6 will multiply together, and the 6 and the 4 will multiply together. We will not multiply them into the bottom. That would be bad. Okay, let's get started. So, negative 8 times negative 6. Well, two negatives multiplied together make a positive. So, 6 times 8 gives us 48. So, 48x, because we keep that x there, plus negative 8 times positive 3. Well, negative times a positive leads a negative and 3 times 8 is 24, so we get negative 24. Now, I forgot to write down my denominator here. Just because we only multiplied it by this doesn't mean that that went away. So don't forget to leave your denominator in. Now let's do the same thing to the other side. 6 times 4 is 24, so 24 and we keep the denominator over 3, x. Now, 8 times, or sorry, 6 times negative 2, well, positive and a negative multiplied together are going to give us a negative number, and 6 times 2 is 12. So we get negative 12. Okay, that first line made things look a lot better. Now, we have some fractions here that are easily simplifiable because 48 divided by 4 gives us 12 and 24 divided by 3 gives us 8 because 3 times 8 is 24. So I'm just going to take this line right here and simplify things up a little bit because it will make our lives a little bit easier later on. So 48 divided by 4 is 12 and I'm going to keep this negative 24 here and 24 divided by 3 gives us 8. And again, I'm going to keep this negative number here. The next thing that I want to do is move some of these numbers around so that I have like terms on the same side. So I'm going to take this 8x and I'm going to move it over to this side. And I'm going to take this 24, this negative 24, and move it over to the other side. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. That will cancel this off and let it move over there. The other way you can look at it is you can take this whole negative, or you can take this whole 8x and move it to the other side and add a negative sign in front of it. And that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to take my 12x and I'm taking this 8x and I'm subtracting it from both sides so that will cancel it off on that side and I will get negative 8x on this side. Now I am taking this negative 24, the opposite of subtracting 24 is adding 24, so I'm going to add 24 to both sides. So adding 24 to both sides, and I still have my negative 12 here. Well, it's kind of pointless to have this little plus sign here. I just wrote it there for um, ease of talking, so I'm just going to delete that up. Okay, things are looking a lot simpler right now. We just need to add or combine like terms. So 12x minus 8x, that is going to combine to give us 4x. And we have 24 minus 12. That's going to combine to give us a positive 12. We are just about done. The last thing that I need to do 
is to get rid of this 4 that's on this side. And I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by 4. Now, I could just take that 4 and move it to the bottom. And if you understand that trick, you're welcome to do it. But in case you don't, I'll do this one the long way. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, because anything divided by itself gives us 1. So that leaves us with x equals 12 over 4. Well, x equals 12 divided by 4, you can simplify that, because 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we end up getting x equals 3. And that is our final answer. So let's just recap what we did. First, we took this negative 8 and we multiplied it into both pieces. So 8 times 6 was our 48. We kept our denominator. Negative 8 times 3 gave us negative 24. And we did the same thing with our 6. 6 and 4 is 24. And 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Then we simplified it. We divided these numbers up to give us these, and then we combined like terms. So anytime I cross the sign, so this positive 8, when it moved to the other side here, became a negative. And when this 24 moved to the other side of the equal sign, it became a positive. From there, we just added like terms. And from here, we just divided both sides by the same number and simplified. Hopefully you can figure this out on your own. You may need to watch this video a few times, but these questions, these algebra questions, are extremely important to master. So if, even if it takes you five or ten tries just to master one problem, believe me, it'll be worth it in the long run. Good luck!